Hey, good morning and welcome, uh, online class students. I see you guys here. Um, just want to read a couple of scriptures. One is from Colossians 3 and verse 16. Okay, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Okay, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the to God the Father through him. So right, that was Colossians chapter 3, verses 16, 17. And maybe we can just look at verse 15 also. It says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, um, to whom you were called in one body, and be thankful. Right? So let the peace of God rule in your hearts, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And then it talks about the overflow, right? Teaching, admonishing, and hymns, and um, you know, uh, uh, and one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Okay, and we took one more scripture, which is um, Ephesians chapter uh, five. Ephesians chapter five and verses um, eighteen onwards. Um, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Right. So uh, two things, like when we see the peace of God, being filled um, with the peace of God, having the word of God dwell in us richly, right? And then we here we see being filled with the Spirit of God, being filled with the Holy Spirit. So we see that um, we are actually called to live life in an overflow, right? Peace of God overflows, uh, does something to us, in us, and does a lot of things uh, to others. The word of God dwell in us richly, right? rich deposit of the Word of God. So God does things to us, you know, increases faith, um, uh, there's conviction, there's a standard for living, etc. does something to us. And, and then there is a overflow, like you're singing in psalms and um, singing uh, hymns and, 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 and admonition and all that. Same with the Spirit of God. You know, we're filled with the Spirit of God and, uh, and then because of the Spirit of God, you know, what we've been studying, all that happens to us, and there is a overflow. Okay, so we see that we are called to live life in the in an overflow, overflow of peace, overflow of the word of God, overflow of the Holy Spirit. Okay. But first we need to receive and then we will overflow. Okay. But we are invited to this. We are called to this. Okay. So let's pray and let's pray, God, uh, let me overflow. I want to overflow. Uh, with the peace that surpasses all understanding. I want to overflow with your word, um, which you write upon my heart. I want to overflow with um, the work of your spirit. Um, so fill me, O oh God. You know, so we just ask the Lord and we'll just receive from him. Right? Um, in your own words, in your heart, just pray and ask the Lord. Lord, you fill me, Lord. You grant me your peace. You grant me, O oh God that I be filled with your peace, your peace which goes beyond my understanding, goes over and above my understanding, so that in all circumstances, in all situations, God, that I will have the assurance of your supernatural peace, God, the kind of peace that uh, I, the Lord Jesus says, you know, my peace I give to you, right? the kind of peace that allowed him to sleep in the, in the midst of the storm. Right? He was in that boat, but he can't that kind of peace. And the Lord Jesus says, my peace I give to you. You know, the kind of peace that I have, I give to you. So um, let's just receive and say, Lord, yes, your supernatural peace. Lord, we receive God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we also see that um, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, one of the things that we see is peace. Right? The supernatural peace. It's a supernatural work of God, the Holy Spirit, in our heart, which produces this kind of peace, an overcoming peace, a victorious peace. Um, 
Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We receive, God. And let's also ask the Lord, Lord, I want a rich deposit of your word, a rich deposit of rhema, God. You speak to me. You open my eyes, Lord, to see wonderful things from your word. Lord, you've said, oh God, ask and you will receive. And so, God, we ask in faith and we receive in faith, Lord. Lord, even as you lead us, as you reveal, Lord, your word to us, may there always be a rich deposit of your word. You know, um, maybe maybe we can just posture ourselves, you know, uh, bring us to a place of receiving. Lean uh, unto him and say, God, you speak, we listen. Yes, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for understanding. Lord, we thank you, God. We, we, we just want to yield, oh God, to your writing, your word upon our hearts, God. Yes, Father God, Spirit of God, write your word upon our hearts. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, may we make every uh, opportunity, may we take every opportunity, may we make use of this time, God, to position ourselves to receive your word, Father God. Lord, we don't want to be stumbling blocks to others from receiving. And we don't want to be barriers ourselves, God. We don't want to put any barriers ourselves, God, for us receiving everything of the flesh, everything that hinders God. We put it away. We push it away from us, God. And Lord, we ask for the infilling of your Holy Spirit. Fill us to overflowing, God. Fill us, God. Yes, Master. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And may we overflow with all this, God. May we overflow with your goodness. May we overflow, Lord, with the work of your Spirit. So that it will be a blessing that we might be, our lives will be a blessing to others. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So today, um, let's talk about... Um, Again, let's continue to talk about the gifts, right? Gifts of the Spirit. Um, so we'll we'll start with um, you know just looking at um, when we when we look at the gifts of the Spirit. Of course, uh, we're going to look at one Corinthians twelve. Right? We're going to look at each of those gifts. How many gifts are lifted? I mean, listed there. One Corinthians nine gifts, right? So we're going to look at each one of them. Of course, we've already studied the gift of tongues, so we won't go into that. Uh, but we're going to look at uh, each one of those, right? But before that, uh, let's look at um, you know the context, right? Why are we studying, uh, you know, about the gifts of the Spirit? Why are we even considering this, right? Um, so if you look at the ministry of the Lord, okay. If you look at the ministry of the Lord, we see that it was a supernatural ministry. We see all these things in operation. We don't see gift of tongues and interpretation, but we see all the other, like um, you know, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. We see uh, healings, miracles, all those things in operation in the ministry of the Lord Jesus, right? And we are called to walk in His footsteps. Okay, so we should not shy away from knowing and from pursuing, desiring, and having these operate in our lives, because that's God's will for us. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, when you think about it, it's like His desire for us to walk in these gifts is more than our desire sometimes, our desire right, for the gifts themselves. Okay, um, Let's look at a few uh, scriptures. Psalm 105. Okay, Psalm 105. Verses 1 to 4. Okay, Psalm 105, verses 1 to 4. Okay, if you have the other, um, the, the book, the Gifts of the Spirit, you can follow that. Um, I think, um, yeah, online students, you have the, uh, you can download, it's already there, uploaded in resources, um, the, the resources tab. Um, and all of you, I think, have it on your WhatsApp, right? Uh, the soft copy, the PDF, Gifts of the Spirit. Um, I think when you initially, um, I think the first week of the class or something, um, classes, it was WhatsApp. Okay, so just check that out. So if you have, probably if you have a class, WhatsApp group, you can forward it. Yeah, gifts of the Spirit, right? If you have that PDF, you can put it on the group. Okay, so let's look at Psalm 105, verses 1 to 4. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Okay, so 
give thanks to the lord call upon his name seeking him pursuing him worshiping him what does it say make known his deeds among the people like reaching out to people sharing about what good things he has done who he is etc sing to him sing psalms to him verse 2 talk of all his wondrous works glory in his holy name let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the lord okay seek the lord and his strength seek his face evermore okay so that's the exhortation okay seek the lord presence of god seek his face seek his face literally means the presence of god right who he is the character nature right and his strength which talks about the power of god the expression of the power of god so we cannot you know we cannot separate the presence of god or the character and the nature of god from the power of god okay many times we say that right um like even some songs actually say you know i, I don't seek your i only seek your face i don't seek your hand you know, i think there's a popular song you know in which that one line is there right? we, uh, we we don't seek your uh, hands we seek your face i just want to know you yeah? which is which is good okay the singer the songwriter is just saying that you know it's very sincerely saying i i really want you god really want your presence god but the fact is you cannot separate you know you cannot separate the power of god from the presence of god is one and the same it's is part of him who he is right okay so that's something that we see here we are exhorted to seek him seek his face and his strength okay another scripture psalm 111 okay if you want to go to psalm 111 verses 1 to 3 okay you can turn your bibles there psalm 111 verse 1 praise the lord i will praise the lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation okay look at verse 2 the works of the lord are great studied by all who have pleasure in them okay so what does it talk about it talks about the works of the lord okay um immediately after him and worshiping him, it just talks about it just flows into that the works of the lord are great studied by all what does it mean to study to investigate to research to to examine what do you say attention observe to so to research to observe to examine with the intent of continuing in it right with the intent of putting that into practice you know that word there that is what it means so the works of the lord are great studied by all who have pleasure in them his work is honorable and glorious right and his righteousness endures forever so his work uh, is it could be his work of creation it could be his work of you know all that you can say are his works right um works of power works of creation works of transformation his works are great right uh, and it says it's honorable and glorious and his righteousness endures forever so uh, everything that proceeds from the lord the works of the lord it's honorable it's gracious i mean it's it's glorious right um, so we can talk about everything when you when you look at the gifts of the spirit these are expressions of the holy spirit these are the expressions of god okay so this is not just uh, you know, sometimes it's uh, represented or misrepresented um, by sincere believers, right? So we say, oh, that that man of God, that woman of God, we, we tend to put our focus on the person and miss out on actually the work of God and miss out in the sense uh, we, we put the focus there, right? Rather than the actual works of God themselves, rather than God who needs to get the glory. Right. Yes, he uses us as human vessels. So, so what happens is, if that person, you know, makes a mistake, if that person, um, you know, abuses the gifts, right, and then the thing is, it causes a lot of damage. So people say, okay, I don't want anything to do with this because it's this. If this is what the gift does, or this is what um, the objective is, I don't want anything to do with it. And so people stay away stay away from the, the power of god thinking that okay this is you know this is not of god but whereas we see that okay this is what it is the works of god are honorable they are glorious i mean we look at all the gifts yes this is what they are they are the expression 
of the Holy Spirit. They are a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it's very, very important. Okay, when we look at the ministry of the Lord Jesus, we again, we again see that the Lord taught some amazing things. Right? What he taught, people said, hey, where does this person get the wisdom? Where does this man get the wisdom? But he didn't just speak some wonderful things for them to hear. He did some amazing things. Right? People looked at the compassion. People looked at the way he reached out and touched lepers. You know, people who were untouchable, uh, of considered untouchable of those times. He he reached out, touched, and and he, you know, he's, there was so much of compassion um, uh, from coming from him. So people saw, okay, this is a great life. You know, it's a wonderful life. So much of love, so much forgiveness, so much of compassion. Okay, so they were awed by the wisdom, they were awed by his character. But it doesn't stop there, right? It goes on. Scripture goes on to say that hey, he ministered in power. He ministered in power because that's who God is. His presence comes with the power. It's a whole package, right? So let's look at a few scriptures which talk about that. Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. In the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Luke 4 verse 14. And news of him went out throughout all the surrounding region. Now, question: Why did the news of him spread to all the surrounding region? Because of? Okay, that's partly yeah, partly right. What is the? Sorry. Because of the? Yeah. So his power was actually expressed. Right? His power was uh, expressed how in his ministry, the way he reached out, the way he touched people, the way he, all his miracles and supernatural things. It was very plain for people to see, so they could not help but talk about it. Right? And we are talking about a time when there was no instant communication, there was no direct messaging, there's no, we're talking about a time where news of him spread, which means with word of mouth. Right? People would travel probably and go and say something's happening there because this person is teaching wonderful things this person is living a great life this person is doing amazing things right okay then when you look at uh, acts chapter 10 and verse 38 again talks about the power of the spirit okay just want to remind us we're talking about we are learning about the gifts of the spirit and so we're looking at that context okay um the background. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good. Right? Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Right? So he was anointed. The, the Lord was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. Okay, who went about doing good. So all that he did comes under the category of good. Okay. So it's not okay, maybe some are good, maybe some are, I don't know, questionable. No, it comes under the category of good. All the things that he did. So if you list down, okay, everything, his teachings, his miracles, it comes as good and approved, good. And this is the purpose for which he was anointed. Okay, so... We see that the Lord did this. We see right in the Psalms, we see that character, the nature of God. And, and uh, we as people who study Him, who, who worship Him, you know, we are supposed to take pleasure in actually studying uh, the works of God. Okay, so we see that. Then, another interesting thing. In the teachings of the Lord Jesus, the Lord... Um, you come. So the Lord, uh, John chapter 14 and verse 12, the Lord turning around and telling his church, telling, telling his disciples. Right? What did he say? John chapter 14 and verse 12. Let's read that verse. Okay. John 14 and verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Okay, so the Lord is 
telling his disciples, hey, I know you've watched me do this, do these things, but this is my will. Okay, this is my desire. Okay, what is it? That you who follow me, you who believe in me, in my words, in my teachings, in my life, this is what will, this is what I want for you. you know, those who believe in me will do the works that I do. And he says, because I go to my father. And the reason is this, because he goes to the father, who's he sending? The Holy Spirit, who is the helper. Right? He says, that's what we see in the next verse, right? Um, or if you, yeah, verse 17, uh, 16 and 17, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot see. So he's just saying, okay, this is what is, I'll go to the Father, and I will send the helper. He will abide with you, just like he abides with me, and do those good things. Do those good things, right? Okay. So the Lord Jesus turned to the disciples, turned to those who were there right then, and then this is what will happen. And the church, we see after the, the Lord was, you know, uh, Lord ascended, we see the church walking the same way he did, right? Yes or no? Yeah. So we see the apostles, you know, the, uh, it, it says in Acts chapter 4, verse 33, and with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So think about it. With great power, what does it mean? Right. Yeah, so they gave witness to the resurrection. They said with their words, they testified, saying, Jesus is alive. Jesus is Lord. You know, and we need to come to that place of repentance and receive new life, you must be born again. So they're saying that with their words, but also they are giving witness with another thing, you know, which, which accompanies the words, which is great power, expression of great power, right? It's, so it's not something that is um, putting them, glorifying them, putting them on a pedestal, but is actually glorifying God because it comes from God. It is from Him. It is, it is very much part of Him, integral part of who He is. Right? So we need to get that perspective right? and say, God, this is from you. And forget about you know, all those abuses and maybe all those things that are going wrong with uh, you know, maybe what we've seen in church and all that. And, and really embrace it and say, oh, God, this is from you. Jesus, if this is from you, then I want it. Help me to walk in it because that's your plan, that's your will, that's your desire. Right? Okay. So we see the apostles. Now this is about the apostles. It just says they gave witness to the resurrection with great power. Then we read about Stephen, uh, Acts chapter 6. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then we read about Philip, Acts chapter 8. Right? Unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many were who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Right. Now, the verse before that says, and uh, the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, or heard, listened, obeyed the things that he, he taught, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Okay. And it also talks about others. So their names are not written there, but they. it, it says, you know, this particular verse, um, uh, verse 20 of Acts 11, okay, Acts chapter 11 and verse 20, um, even verse 19, now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. You know, it talks about those people who just scattered. So many were there. Okay. Uh, so Philip was also one of them. So many who was, whose names were not written. right? So these were believers, just like you and I. They, they were scattered. They went to all these different places. And it says in verse 21, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. The hand of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. When you put your hand on someone, and it's your, your presence, your physical presence. You know, you're, you're just letting that person know that you are there. You're letting that person know about your presence, like when you put your hand on someone, right? So the hand of the Lord was upon them. That that manifest, tangible presence of the Lord was upon them, and many believed and turned to the Lord. So we see that 
Okay, this is how they live the normal Christian life. Okay, the normal Christian life. So for us today, it is the same thing. It is the same thing that, well, when it comes to the supernatural, you know, God, the Lord did not say, okay, uh, it is only going to be the early church, and and any time after that, you know, it's it's not going to be. Some, uh, some arguments are like this. You know, it's, it's from one Corinthians um, uh, chapter thirteen. Okay, um, it says that for we know in part and we prophesy in part. Okay, let's look at that verse. One Corinthians thirteen and verse nine. Okay, one Corinthians thirteen and verse nine it says for we know in part and we prophesy in part. One of the gifts are listed there. So we know something. We all prophesy. You know, we, we we can't know everything, but yes, as we receive, we prophesy. We know in part. We prophesy in part. This is the next verse. Uh, the next verse. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. So what it means is that there's going to come a time when this prophesying in part will stop. That that is what it means, right? That which is in part will be done away with, meaning it is it's going to stop. When when does it stop? When that which is perfect has come. So the popular thing, uh, or you know, I wouldn't say popular. The, you know, many believe that okay, it's talking about the Word of God. It's talking about the Bible. So um, during that time, well, it was Old Testament scriptures, and then the Bible was you know. The word of God just coming together, and uh, um, as Paul and the other apostles wrote, God used them to write the scriptures, and um, and so here, you know, people say that okay, the word of God, the Bible has come. We have the full Bible, therefore, we don't need prophesying. We don't need gifts. Okay. So it, time has come. There was a time for that. Yes, we believe in that, but we believe that the time is not now. It's not with us. You know, it's not for us. It's for that time or that age. Okay. Now, if you look at um, you know the verses following that, we understand what is this. Uh, you know that which is part or that which is perfect has come. What is it? What is Paul actually talking about? Okay, let's look at verse eleven. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Okay, so he's saying he's contrasting between what is in part, what is incomplete. Of what does not reach the fullness, and you know something else when when that which will which is complete will be there. So he's saying, okay, now I know in part, but then I shall know fully. Right? That's what he means. Fully, I will know. What is he saying? Now I see in a mirror, but then face to face. What is he talking about? You know, who is he talking about? He's talking about. He's talking about the Lord. He's talking about meeting with the Lord, spending time with the Lord. And he's, he's saying now, and then face to face. Now I just, it's a glimpse now. You know, as in a mirror, it, I see something faint, but then I shall see face to face. Right? So he's saying, okay, this is what is happening now. Now I know in part and I prophesy in part. But when that happens, there's no need for prophesying. There's no need for praying in tongues. There's no need for word of knowledge, word of wisdom, because in the presence of the Lord, right, there's no more. Uh, you know, uh, giving a word of prophecy because we are receiving comfort directly from the presence of God. Uh, there's no demo, there's no more need to you know being edified because you are being edified directly in the presence of the Lord. There's no there's no more need for that. So he's saying, okay, this is what will happen. So so that argument really doesn't hold good if we actually go through it. Right? So there's no expiry date on the gifts, right? And especially when we when we see that the eternal word, the Lord Jesus, right? What does John chapter one say? The word became flesh and dwelt among us, right? The eternal word who became flesh and dwelt among us, how did he minister? He ministered as anointed by the Holy Spirit. 
and he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He and he went out doing good and healing all who were um, who were um, you know oppressed by the enemy by, by Satan by the enemy by the devil because God was with him. So he talks about the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit under which the Lord ministered. So if the eternal word which became flesh and dwelt among us did those things that he did by the power of the Holy Spirit, how much more for us? You know, the deep need for us to be anointed by the Spirit of God, the need for us to minister the way he ministered, the way he walked. Okay, so um, so those are some things that um, uh, that those are some arguments, you know, against uh, the gifts or you know the power of God working through people's lives. The other thing is also um, the common thing is like, okay, what if we are deceived? Okay, see, there is the counterfeit. There is the you know there is the authentic, the real, and also the counterfeit. Now, what if I you know get deceived and I go in these what what is called as the uh, you know false works or counterfeit works or the works of the enemy and you know i'm just deceiving myself so that is another thing so let not let me not get into that area at all let me just stay you know with the teaching and with the word and let me not get into that aspect okay but you know, but, but the thing is if you look at um, common wisdom and, and the scriptures they use is this, you know, Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Okay, the coming of the lawless one. So he's saying, it's like, hey, the church is walking in it. These are all lying wonders. <laughs> because that's the coming of the lawless one. That's it's all lying wonders. Um, Second Thessalonians, sorry, Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 9. Okay. And uh, 2 Corinthians 11 also talks about the false apostles, the deceitful workers who transform themselves into, you know, workers of Christ because Satan himself is like an angel of light. Uh, he transforms himself into an angel of light. So therefore, his ministers also do that. So the thing is this, we look at, you know, these two verses, scriptures like this and say, okay, these are all counterfeit things. These are lying works. Is the lying signs and wonders, so I don't want anything to do with that. Okay, um, but the thing is this: you know, if we, if there is a counterfeit, first of all, it means that there is something real or authentic. If you're calling something as counterfeit, okay, this is all lying wonders. This is duplicate. You know, when you say, okay, okay this is a, this watch, it's a duplicate watch. It's not a original so what does it mean when you say something is a duplicate something is not a thing. you're actually saying there is something that is real right? you say it's a counterfeit uh, 500 rupees not it's a duplicate one it's not real you're saying that there is an authentic okay so that's one thing the second thing is because there's something counterfeit would you throw out the authentic okay, just because people say okay you know there is a counterfeit 500 rupees know in circulation uh, does that mean that you will never use 500 rupees note at all in your life you will not receive 500 rupees right so the counterfeit points to the fact that there's an authentic and there's no reason to throw out you know, uh, the real just because there is the counterfeit okay? and the third thing is this that yeah we need to be discerning we need to be wise but the fact is that we just continue with what is real, what is authentic. Okay, we see we see lying signs and wonders, and uh, you know the the miraculous as energized by the powers of darkness. When we look at um, you know how Moses goes and he has his interaction in Pharaoh uh, in in the in the king's court, right? So Pharaoh's court. So he goes there, and he says, okay. Um, the you know this is why I I come God uh, the uh, I am has sent me and you need to set the people free right I've come to take my people so he um, the Pharaoh calls his magicians and he's also there he he throws the the we you know that's right so he throws the staff it becomes a, stone, a snake 
and the court magicians also do the same thing okay so a couple of other things also you know they do the same thing but then beyond that they are not able to replicate like the river turns into uh, blood and all that they are not able to repl replicate and say and this is what they say you know if you if you look at um, um yeah uh, if you look at exodus chapter 8 okay exodus 8 verses 18 to 19 Exodus 8, 18, now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lice, okay, that insect, but they could not. So there were lies on man and beast. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard uh, and he did not heed, just as the Lord has said. Okay, So this is the thing. Okay, so he put the staff down, it turned into snake. The magicians put the staff down, their rods, it also turned into snake. Snake. So did Moses stop? I think he must have been surprised, right? Oh, I didn't expect that. I, I didn't think that these guys would also do it, right? Um, so did he say, okay, now let's pack up and go? <laughs> and then say, okay, Lord, different strategy, Lord, maybe I should try something else. Now this signs and wonders is not working. Right. They are also doing the same thing. Moses continued. Aaron and Moses and Aaron who were there, they continued on. They did not stop. As the Lord actually was with them and led them, they did not stop with the first and the second and the third. They went beyond the third. And then we see that the power of God was no match, no comparison. So much so, it turned around to be a testimony where the magician said to the king, this is the finger of God. This is the power of God. Right? And the Lord Jesus uses the same usage, you know, um, like the finger of God. If I cast out Beelzebub by the finger of God, know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. Right? Referring to the work of the Holy Spirit, right? the power of God. So we see that, um, well, there will be counterfeits. There will be counterfeits. It just points to the original. There will be counterfeits. There's no reason to throw out the original because of the counterfeit. There will be counterfeits, but the, the example that we see in Scripture is to persist, keep going. Keep going because it's of the Lord, it's from the Lord, and it glorifies Him. So go for that. Um, okay. So let's... Um, um, so. So this is a context, and um, we see that everything is, when you look at the power of God, first of all, we saw that, yes, we cannot just separate its part and parcel of him, of who he is as a person. Okay, um, You know, it, it'll be very insulting, you know, if people, yeah, people do that, right? You know, people, uh, let's say you are admired or appreciated for some quality, okay, some ability that you have. Okay, um, but if if people continue to do that and not really appreciate you as a person, you know, uh, it just takes uh, after some time. You know, you you feel a little, I don't know, used. Yes or no? Yeah, you know, you you know, you're, you're just appreciated. You're just as a for your ability. You know, okay, oh, this guy can, I don't know, this, this person can run fast. Everybody, and that's what happens in the world. Okay, like one one day, you know, they were all writing negative things about Virat Kohli. Like he's lost his farm. I, I mean, anybody watches cricket or interested in cricket? Okay, otherwise we'll change the story. <laughs> if only one, no? Uh, okay, Vimal and Nikhil. Oh, Francis. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, let's say some other sport. <laughs> we'll forget cricket for now. Okay, some other sports. You know, people actually, when you're not doing well, when you're not in form, when you're not, uh, the paper writes a lot of things. You know, uh, people write a lot of negative things. That's it. Is it the end of the career? You know, he used to be so good that this is over. And then suddenly you do do well, and then it's like, you see the, 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 
did it. You know, King Virat. That's what the papers are saying. Uh, all the memes. King Virat did it again. But you you remember? You know, in the T20, the 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 other series. Um, they were all writing things. You know, this is he's not in form. He's not. He's probably preoccupied. This captain. A lot of things, right? So that's what happens. People just focus on the ability and not on the other thing. So, so sometimes we tend to do that. You know, that's um, you know, as as believers, as the church, and we tend to focus on the gifts. Yes, that is great. We need to do that. Right? The Bible, in fact, commands us pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Right? But we need to understand that the gifts are the gifts belong to the Holy Spirit. These are called the gifts of the Spirit. Right? So our responsibility is to have fellowship with the giver. Right? Have communion with the, the giver of these gifts. While at the same time pursuing the power uh, or uh, you know desiring the manifestation of the gifts two things right we need to not lose that it's the same thing both sides of the same coin and that's why paul writes pursue love which is the character of god you no know, he just talked about in 1 corinthians 13 the whole chapter about the agape the love of god the unconditional love of god and he says pursue love and desire spiritual gifts so our fellowship, you know, we need to pursue our fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, right? And uh, and because He is the Helper, He is the uh, our Comforter. So we need to, uh, you know, pursue our, our fellowship. What does fellowship mean? Anyone? Spend time. Fellowship. The, what is the Greek word for fellowship? It's a word called uh, koinonia, right? Koinonia, a right? Greek word koinonia, which refers to the communion, right? So it means fellowship. It means friendship. It also means partnership. Okay. So friendship. Okay. So which means that you are friends. You are getting to know the heart of God. What likes? What he likes? What he dislikes? Yeah, so there is in in developing that friendship, there's a lot of you know transparency, openness, a lot of communication, a lot of spending time. Okay. Then fellowship, which means there's you know this it's much more than a casual friendship, but deep things, deep things are exchanged. And also it is partnership, which means that now you're working together. He's already doing something, but you're working together. And we're not resisting the work, we're not quenching the work, but we are learning to work together. Like when you look at Kononia, it's it's all that. It's friendship, it's fellowship, and it is partnership with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so so we we need to develop that. We need to um, intentionally pursue that, right? Um, if we are to be believers who want to manifest the gifts of the Spirit, right? pursue fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He is a person, right? not just an abstract power. Right? He is a person. We, we learned that in the very first chapter, first few chapters, that he is a person. He has feelings. Is, you know, he is God. Right? So pursue fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So the Bible says that he's the helper. He's, he's, so pursue fellowship with the helper. Um, so you know, receive help. He gives grace. He gives strength. So you, know, you receive that from him. He's also called a comforter. Receive comfort. He brings encouragement. Uh, he brings renewing, you know, healing to our lives. Receive that. He's the advocate. He's our defense. Let God defend you. Let the Holy Spirit defend you. Right? Um, and He's the intercessor. He enables us to pray. He's interceding for us. He helps us in our weakness and so on. So He's the counselor. He has wisdom. So many things that we see that He is, um, that the Holy Spirit is. Right. So we need to deepen our communion with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now there's a reason why we are spending time, you know, talking about this, uh, because we will get into the nuts and bolts of the gifts. 
okay we will get into why this works how this works how to function in it and it will be very very you know for use of a better word for want of a better word i'm saying it will be very technical so sometimes we think okay oh it's like a formula it's like a scientific method well the thing is it starts with fellowship it starts with intimacy and that is the foundation for the whole thing you never forget that right even when we look at okay this is how you know sometimes we talk about it right when we perceive like during the supernatural hour we talk about it okay how you know sometimes we heard uh, you know many questions like um okay what did you sense right um you say when you say okay god spoke sometimes the question asked is what did you sense how did you you know, how did you receive? Was it a picture? What is? A, was it something? Impression? Uh, was it a? You know, something. You know, some questions are asked now, and we get technical. But the foundation is friendship and fellowship and intimacy with God. Okay, that is always the foundation. Okay, so that's the reason we are we're just reiterating over and over again. Well, it's 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 the presence of God. It is the it is a fellowship with Him that we need to pursue, and that's foundational. That's um, you know that's. Uh, Um, yeah, that's foundational. Uh, while we get into the details, right, of the gifts, and so develop our relationship. So, how do I do that? I talk to him. Talk to him. Enjoy his presence. Okay. Let's talk to him. Enjoy his presence. Okay. Many times we, yeah, we we go read the Bible because we want to prepare. We read the Bible because we want to. We have to study. Um, for something, maybe we read the Bible because we need. And as students, I'm saying, you know, we uh, maybe there's an assignment that you need to complete. There's a paper that you need to write, and you know, we read the Bible for a quiz that you need to prepare for. We read the Bible for all that, but you know, can we talk to Him? Can we enjoy His presence? Right? So there's no agenda, you know, when you meet with friends, and uh, you know, I, I remember, um, you know, talking to some friends and. There's no agenda. It's like, okay, first, we're going to talk about this, talk about this. No. We just, you know, this is a freewheeling chat. In, and before you, before long, you realize I'm two hours, three hours have gone. And, you know, that's what happens, right? Like, I remember I was just having lunch with some friends. So you're just talking. Or we finished service and everything, locked everything, went, had lunch. So we're talking, talking, talking till the food arrived. Food arrived, we're talking, still talking. Uh, and then food, you know, everything, we paid the bill, we went down, we went to our vehicles, and then we are standing there and we are talking. Okay, and then, uh, and I'm still talking, and then people got into the car and said, okay, I think we need to, we'll let them, you know, we'll send one signal. At least by then, now they will stop. At least now they'll stop talking, and then, you know, we'll send them some. So they got into the car, they took my, they took the key, got into the car, they were sitting, and then we are still talking. Right, so you you lose track of time, right? So, so we are um, invited to that, to that aspect of friendship. Right? So um, I think today is just reminded that God is inviting us to that place of friendship. Yes, He's a holy God. Yes, He's a consuming fire. Yes, He dwells in unapproachable light. Who's made Himself? You know, He's He's made the way for us to approach Him uh, because of the shed blood of Christ. Yes, you know, He's a God of justice and all that. But also, He's the most approachable, awesome God who's inviting us for intimacy and friendship. Right? Okay. So we'll stop here, and and then we'll we'll continue. We'll take a break, and then we'll continue.